If you've ever zapped leftovers in plastic or quickly microwaved a snack for your kids, this video is for you. What I'm about to share might surprise you. Microwaves are a staple in modern life. They're fast, convenient, and always within reach. And no judgment here because I use them from time to time myself, but only if I'm in a real hurry, which I try my best not to be, so I can minimize microwaving my family's food. Here's what you need to know. That ordinary microwave habit might be exposing your body and your family to hormone disrupting chemicals, hidden toxins, and even carcinogens. Not in some dramatic way, not overnight, but in small, invisible ways that add up every single day, which is what we call chronic exposure. And here's the kicker. You're probably doing everything right. Using containers that are labeled microwave safe, using those splatter proof cover plastic things, heating up store-bought meals, trusting what the label says. It's not your fault. The truth is labels don't mean what you think they mean. And I'm not here to tell you to throw out your microwave or start overhauling your life. But once you understand what's really happening when plastic packaging and certain foods go into that machine, you may never look at reheating the same way again, because the danger isn't the microwave itself. It's the false sense of safety. We've all been sold and the everyday habits that are stacking against us. I'm a toxicologist with over 23 years of experience, helping people identify and reduce hidden chemical exposures in their daily environments. And in all that time, microwave habits are one of the most overlooked, but the easiest to fix. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through the three biggest microwaving mistakes that I see what's actually happening inside your food and how to make simple science backed swaps that can dramatically reduce your toxic load. So let's dive in. Let's start with one of the biggest hidden dangers, microwaving food in plastic containers or with plastic wrap. It seems safe, right? Especially if the bottom of the container says microwave safe, but here's what that label actually means. It just means that it won't melt. That's literally it. There is no such thing as microwave safe plastic, to be honest. It says nothing about whether chemicals will leach into your food when heated. And unfortunately that's exactly what's happening. A 2023 study found that microwaving certain plastic containers for just three minutes released over 4 billion microplastics and 2 billion nanoplastics from a single square centimeter of plastic, which is tiny. So let that sink in for a minute. A quick three minute microwaving session could be unleashing billions of nanoplastic particles without changing the smell or the taste of your food. And you might be wondering, why does this even matter? Microplastics are pervasive environmental pollutants that are not going anywhere. There's so much plastic in the environment and now some of it is in our bodies. Since microplastics have been detected in human lungs, blood, gut, heart, placenta, penis, ovaries, and mostly in the brain, which is highly concerning. Microplastics may seem innocuous, but they're foreign particles that our immune system treats as invaders, which mount an immune response that includes oxidative stress. Oxidative stress is a key underlying mechanism for many chronic diseases like cardiovascular disease, diabetes, neurodegenerative diseases, and cancer. These plastic particles often carry endocrine disrupting chemicals like phthalates and bisphenols, as well as heavy metals into the body. Research links endocrine disruptors to infertility, thyroid dysfunction, metabolic issues, and developmental problems in children. And this isn't a one-time thing. These exposures to microplastics and other pervasive chemicals are cumulative. It's the daily repetition and the daily exposures that add up. This is not meant to scare you whatsoever. This is actual data that has been emerging from studies over the past five years, and you deserve to know so you can take charge of your health and protect yourself. And of course, you know, I always come with the good news. This is one of the easiest swaps to make. So instead of microwaving your food in plastic, use glass containers or ceramic dishes. Make sure they're lead free. Most of them are in the US, but it never hurts to ask the manufacturer to be sure. Glass is the top choice because it's stable, non-reactive and does not leach. Some brands we have in our house are Pyrex, Anchor Hawking, and Ikea. Just remove the lid and I would also avoid microwaving with those plastic covers that protect against splatters because of the same potential for microplastic leaching. I often get asked about silicone and this one is nuanced. Platinum cured medical grade silicone is okay for cold storage, but I would not heat it. Transfer food to glass before microwaving or heating. And the quality of silicone matters. It's hit or miss and leaching can occur when heated. And if you're still covering your bowl with plastic wrap, just place a microwave safe plate over the top instead. Small shift, massive difference. Now let's talk about the food itself, especially starchy foods like potato, rice, 
and packaged snacks. Microwaving seems harmless. It's quick and you don't need to use oil and it feels like a healthier cooking method. But here is the shocker. When starchy foods are exposed to high heat, especially in powerful microwaves, they can form a compound called acrylamide. Why does this matter? Acrylamide is classified as probably carcinogenic to humans by the International Agency for Research on Cancer, IARC, and reasonably anticipated to be a human carcinogen according to the National Toxicology Program. It's also been linked to neurotoxicity, particularly in children whose brains are still developing. Plus, kids tend to eat more starchy snacks like chips and fries and they absorb more pound for pound. So that makes these exposures even more important to manage for your children, especially while their brains and bodies are growing. So here's what you can do instead. Steam or boil starchy foods like potatoes instead of microwaving them. You'll preserve more nutrients and avoid acrylamide formation altogether. But if you still wanna use a microwave, and most of us do, lower the power setting. Avoid browning or crisping. Stir the food halfway through, and also place the food in the corner of the microwave or on the outside edge of the rotating plate. This will heat your food more efficiently so you can cut down on microwaving time. Not sure what high heat on your microwave means? Studies suggest that lowering heat settings in the microwave can reduce acrylamide formation in starchy foods. One easy thing you can do is check if the edges of your food are bubbling, forming a crust, or changing color. And next time, you'll know that was too much heat, too much power, and you can reduce it next time. This is not about doing it perfectly. It's about learning the thresholds and choosing better options. Okay, now let's talk about packaging. What your food is wrapped in matters just as much as what's in it, especially when it comes to PFAS. These are known as forever chemicals because they take forever to break down in the body and in the environment. And for that reason, they're everywhere. You can find them in frozen meals, takeout containers, and especially microwave popcorn bags. When heated, PFAS can migrate directly into your food from the packaging. One study found that people who regularly ate microwave popcorn had significantly higher PFAS levels in their blood and popcorn bags were the main source. Here's why it matters. PFAS bioaccumulate because we're exposed continuously and they take forever to break down. So once it's in your body, it's almost never leaving. It takes several years in fact. They build up over time and now they've been linked to thyroid issues, immune suppression, developmental issues, and even certain types of cancers in people. But this is another place where a small swap will deliver big results. So here's what to do instead. Instead, skip the microwave popcorn bags. You can buy unbagged or loose popcorn kernels and use a glass or stainless steel popcorn maker on the stovetop. For frozen meals, transfer the food to a glass or ceramic dish before heating. Watch out for packaging that feels extra slippery, slick, or grease resistant because that could be a red flag of PFAS. I would look for PFAS free labels like certified compostable from Biodegradable Products Institute or BPI. And when in doubt, check the brand's website and reach out to the manufacturer. This is about learning to spot the things that we are never told to question and knowing how to choose differently. The microwave isn't the worst thing in the world. It's more so the invisible exposures that have become normalized, like plastics, packaging, and temperature extremes that slowly add up without us realizing it. But that means the solution isn't complicated. I've shared three swaps, three small shifts. That's all it takes to reduce your toxic load and protect your long-term health without stress or overwhelm. And remember, you don't need to do every single thing. You just need to know what matters most and opt in for small incremental 1% changes over the long term because they will really stack up over time. So I have to ask, which microwave habit surprised you the most? Was it the plastic, the type of food, or the packaging? Let me know in the comments and tell me what habit you're ready to change starting today. I read every single comment and they help shape what I create next. So if this helped you feel more clear, confident, and more in control of your health, hit that subscribe button. I share weekly strategies to help you build a low tox, high vitality lifestyle that actually works in real life. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.